And good morning, this is Pete and Dorcas Macinta with you on this Sunday, May 29th, 2022, as you hear uh, on the audio, someone's mowing the lawn, so, not not our lawn, on a Sunday, never on a Sunday, no, 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 and, uh, but well, they're out there, and they should be doing that, but anyhow, that's what they're doing, and it's summer, well, spring, springtime, late spring, but we're so glad you could join us, we're Cornerstone Assembly Independent Penny Coastal right here in Cambridge Run. And also, Miss Hinton Ministries, we meet every Sunday night and every Thursday night at 7 p.m. at a place or a church called The River at 415 Academy Street in Cambridge, Maryland. Uh, but we won't be there tonight. We're going to cancel service for various reasons. But God willing, we'll be there Thursday. And Thursday, this Thursday, is question and answer time. So come on out. Bring your questions about God, the Bible, whatever. And we'll try to answer for you the best we can from the Word of God. I'm so glad to have you. Now, speaking of the Word of God, the Word of God has said a lot about prophecy, and many of the Bible prophecies have come to pass, and right now we're seeing some coming to pass right now. Uh, we are in the end times, uh, and when we say the end times, we're talking about the end times of the Gentile age. The world's not going to blow up in the, for the next 1,008 years, something like that. So don't worry about that. But do worry about the fact that you can die at any time uh, if you're not ready. And, or Christ can come back at any time. And when he comes back, whoa, it, there's, there's, just before he sets up his kingdom, there'll be, hmm, we could say, a seven-year period of great tribulation. Some say three and a half. We're not here to talk about that possibility either way. Just be ready. But the great tribulation is something that I don't want to be around for, but it's going to happen. Now, some people say the church goes through it, and some say it doesn't at all. It doesn't matter. Just be ready. Just be ready. And that's the main thing. First of all, I won't say what I personally believe, but let me go on here, okay? Uh, if you look, though, closely over at First Thessalonians, I'm going to bring it up on the screen for you now on a special chart, and we're going to read it for you from here. Uh, I need, need to do two things at one time in this case. But let's go to First Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, 6 to 10 is, is our text. However, we're going to read 1 to 10 in a moment. Now, those that are alive in God and alive to God's word realize that we're coming up to the end of this age, the Gentile age. It's going to end. It's going to stop pretty soon. Uh, God has set an expiration point upon this Gentile age. And so uh, that's what we have. And uh, the great tribulation will soon come, after which Christ will set up his glorious kingdom for 1,000 years. I believe it's 1,000 years, right? Yeah, years back, I might not have believed that, but I have come to find out that when the Word of God says something that comes to pass literally, uh, what about the locusts and all that? Well, there'll be some locusts. Oh, no, don't you worry. Yes, the locusts, that sting, is quite possible. Scientists keep discovering new species all the time. Well, they've been around. We just haven't found them. I think God creates this stuff. <laughs> well, but he rested. Yeah, he rested on that particular day, but this, that doesn't mean he stopped creating all together, especially on the, you know, here on the planet Earth. So, uh, oh, I believe he's got some things in store for people. Bear, bear that in mind. And there's going to be some insects that people have never seen before. And let me go on. I'm going to get off the deep end on that one. And I don't want to do that. But let's go to First Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm going to bring it up on the screen for you now. And I'll just cut right to it so we don't do any fading here. And uh, let me read it from a point where I can read it here. All right, now we're going to read 1 Corinthians, not 1 Corinthians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. And really, uh, if we would have time, we, we, we would be in chapter 4 also. It talks about the rapture. It doesn't say rapture in chapter 4. It just says being caught up, caught up. So, uh, but that's chapter 4, the last part of it. And when we get to chapter 5, what's on your screen now is a special chart I did some time back. It's in just... King James language, that's okay, you'll be able to figure it out. And let me look at the chart for you now, and as you see, there's a color code. And if I can read from here, uh, the, the circles in blue, uh, that's that speaks of true Christians. The uh, rectangles in red, that's the Jews. And, uh, uh, and the peace and safety is in orange. Uh, indicating that this is what we hear right now. In fact, we hear peace and security. Well, we don't hear peace and safety, but security. We hear peace and security over in the Middle East. They want that sometimes. 
And so what's the difference? S secure your safety, you know. So peace and security, that's what we're hearing. And uh, so, and then the other thing is uh, the uh, black rec rectangles are, they're about the, the unsaved altogether. So you watch that, see, when you read God's word, read it very carefully and prayerfully, and you'll see some distinctions here. And there is a great distinction between those that are saved and those that are not saved, those that are saved and those that are the unsaved Jews. And we're not picking on the Jewish people. In fact, this is all designed to get them to be saved. <laughs> They'll wind up getting saved at the end of the Great Tribulation, and that's what God desires to do. Why don't they get saved before then? Because, well, just like a, the other billion or so people in the world, yeah, seven billion people, they're bullheaded. It's just like everybody else, like I was and all that. So, uh, we're going to read this now, and you have your chart. You're going to see that on your screen uh, in the King James Version. We're reading it. I'm, when I read the text, it's going to be American King James. When Sisney reads it, it's going to be New King James. And uh, We talked about that before, about copyright issues and so on. But uh, I begin here with verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brothers, and when he says brothers here, he means both male and female, brother, okay? All right, you have no need that I write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, or we could say in our time, peace and security, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail on a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. But you, I'm sorry, you are all the children of light and the children of the day. We, now he, he, there he says, we, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. Now we get to the next section here, which will be our text, verse 6. Therefore let us not sleep, as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep in the night, I'm sorry, they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath. You see that? God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Now, before we continue on here on verse 9, oh, I'll probably mention later on, but I'll mention now, uh, as prompted by the Holy Spirit, God has not appointed us to wrath. That means his wrath. Now, if we do happen to be here during the Great Tribulation period, we will face the wrath of man. In fact, we, we're seeing some of that right now. You, you, you just wait. If Roe versus Wade is overturned, Oh, there's going to be some troubles for Christians in this country. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's rolling our way, my friend. And it's sad to say. Now, we're going to look at verses 6 to 10. And now I'm going to bring up the other video, not video, the other image for you. So you see it. And we're going to, if, when I bring it up, you'll see that, lo and behold, it's color-coded. And so we're going to bring out five things. And you see those five things on the right side of your monitor. And number one, first of all, you know, get these now. Get what? Get awake. Get awake. And there's sleepy Christians. And you know, when I say sleepy Christians, we, we mean spiritually sleepy. But verse 6 says, Therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober, okay? And both are those that watch and sober, they're both in the spiritual sense. They're metaphors, basically. Uh, you know what happens, you know, if you're awake at night, you're watching all that, you're watching out for thieves or whatever, vandalism. Uh, and sober, you're staying away from intoxicants, right? Uh, and you know, certain drugs and so on. So, uh, and so these are metaphors for the way we need to be in the spiritual realm. Don't sleepy, don't be drowsy. We need to be watching and we need to be sober. We'll get to sober later on. But uh, many things can put us to spiritually sleepiness, okay? Spiritually asleep, okay? And spiritual drowsiness, you might say. For one thing, uh, for example, compromising with the thinking of the world is one way. Uh, here's another one. 
not speaking up against sin. We should speak up against sin. Some people should just hands off, uh, basically. Uh, one person, and I, I really, I wrote, I wrote back to them. They should not have thought this one. But there's a certain group that teaches uh, non-resistance. And this particular person applied it to not saying anything about sin. No, that's not what Jesus said about non-resistance. Non-resistance, if someone smacks you on the cheek, you turn the other, right? But uh, we are to fight against the forces of darkness. That's throughout God's word. In fact, we ourselves, we are to rebel against iniquity in ourselves and, of course, throughout the world. So we got to speak up. We have to speak up and all that. And so don't don't fall in that trap. I mean, the Satan is trying to cause Christians to be less responsible. And that's the situation that these people were less, they were getting less responsible. We're not going to speak out against sin. You better. You have to uh, at all. And uh, we're called to do that. Another way we can get spiritual drowsy is to uh, listen to people that encourage cheap grace. Okay, now let me go back on camera for a while here, okay? So you know that we're still living <laughs> and all. But uh, so it, it, listen to teachers and preachers that talk about cheap grace, you know. Oh, it's okay if I sin, God will forgive me. I'm going to do some research. I know at least one or two passages where, where that shows that's not absolutely true. That if you keep on sinning, there's no sacrifice left for you. That's over in Hebrews. That's one of them. And so, no, that doesn't mean, you know, grace doesn't mean we just go out and sin and, and do what we want. And because God will forgive me anyhow, someone once said to Pastor Randall's, well, that's his job. No, <laughs> that's not God's job. <laughs> no, it's our job to be sincere and to turn from sin. By the grace of God, through the life of Christ, directed and empowered by God's Holy Spirit. Amen. So, but there's people that teach cheap grace and all that. I had a friend that just called me up this past week. And he says this one pastor was indicating about, uh, I forget how he was saying it, about it and all. Well, God will forgive you, God will forgive you, which is, you know, you got to watch how you say that. And, uh, and all. And, uh, yeah, God forgives. Yeah, but you, you, first of all, you got to have a sincere heart. You got to apply the life of Christ into your life and all. That's faith. If you look throughout God's word, faith is not just sitting back and, hey, ah, your God's going to do it. This is cool. It's not just that, okay? No, there's many, many times in God's word people had to take some type of action. Step into the water. Uh, what's another one besides that? That's a, that's one I often mention. Oh, he told Peter one time, you know, when they talked about the temple tax, uh, he says, okay, Peter, this is what you do. Go down to the ocean, not the ocean, sea, the body of water, and cast in a hook, and the first fish that you pull up, just take the, take, take the coin out of its mouth. Peter had you that by faith. All right? So, uh, all these things like that, we've got to do things. We've got to take some type of actions. We're, we're not saved by works, but we're saved by the life of Christ within us, and Christ just didn't sit around and wait for the Father to do so. He went out there and ministered. He went out there and preached and so on. Uh, he went out there and healed people, and he, he came against sin. He was not soft on sin at all, my friend. No. All right, for, so uh, forgiveness for God is not automatic and by simply saying, I'm sorry, nor is his grace guaranteed to us if we continue in sin. John chapter 15, you and I have got to remain in Christ, abide in Christ. Why did Jesus say abide in me? Why did he say that? And a lot of people like to point to that passage, I think it's 6, John chapter 6 or 8, somewhere in there. Uh, no one can get them out of the hand, my father, stuff like that. I paraphrase that. Or no, and in fact, he says this twice in the Gospel of John. One is that you can't pluck them out of the hand, my father, and you can't pluck them out of my hands. <laughs> one of the same being, okay? When you can write, this is true, but we can let go of his hand. We can wreck our faith, my friend. And so bear that in mind. So don't listen to this stuff that once you're saved, you're good for everybody. 
No, you got to stay in Christ, okay? And you just don't say that prayer and sit back and, and oh, I'm saved. I'm cool. I'll have another beer. Uh, oh, what's that on the YouTube? A little skin? Yeah. Uh, no, no way. So, now, by the way, the more we entertain sin, the more of the devil's poison is placed within us. Uh, you're back. Now, I wasn't like this all my life, but uh, yeah. after I got saved and we got married, I got introduced more to the natural stuff, okay? And I began to realize what I was hearing is true. The in, Some of the chemicals in our food to help preserve it and make it look good and all, they slow us down. And they stay in our system too long. Sometimes they stay in it for almost forever and all. So, uh, and these things just slow you right down and they can make you sick after a time if you don't get rid of these things. So we go after the more natural stuff. Now, this, this is much more important in the spiritual realm. If we entertain sin, then that puts the spiritual toxins within us. Well, if I'm saved by grace. Uh, it ain't going to happen to me. You know, I'm, I won't be affected. Oh, yes, you will. Yeah, and even if you don't purposely sin, if you look, if you permit yourself, maybe this, this isn't sin, if you permit yourself to be influenced by certain things around you, like, uh, I told one guy one time, uh, when the when Isis martyred those, well, I think it was ten or twelve Christians, and they cut their heads off and all that. I told him, don't look at that. You know, just don't look at it because there's a spirit behind that. But I'm afraid he did look at it, you know, at all. And he 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 has since wrecked his faith. This guy, he has since wrecked his faith. If you look at the winds and the waves, you will wreck your faith. Bear that in mind. So, we don't want to entertain sin. And we increasingly become unaware of spiritual problems and dangers as we get spiritually sleepy all the time, spiritually drowsy. And we could just go on with the whole list. We won't do that. So there you have it on the screen. Get awake. All right, now let's roll on here, okay? And the second thing is get away. Get away, get away. And let's go back to our texture so you can have it on the screen there. Uh, that color coding, uh, that's not the color coding. Okay, this is what we want. Okay, here we go. And so now we want verse 7 of First Thessalonians chapter 5. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. Those who sleep, sleep at night. If you get spiritually drowsy, you are tampering with the realm of darkness, my friend. And you don't want to get there. Uh, so we want to get away from spiritual sleepiness. What about drunkenness here? Uh, before I got saved, I think I got drunk one time. It wasn't all that bad. But still, I got drunk. That, that should not be. Uh, I'm not knocking my parents. They got saved about a year after I did. But my parents and all my relatives, they got drunk, okay? Uh, listen, when you're like that, you, you... You think things and see things sometimes, and you do things you shouldn't do. You th think things that are not real and all that. You do crazy stuff and all. And uh, so it's a delusion. Uh, delusions come upon you. And it, more so in the spiritual realm, if we permit ourselves to tamper with sin and all that, and we don't get away from the spiritual drunkenness, uh, we're going to have spiritual delusions. And once again, that... that we're usually influenced that way by listening to false teachers and prophets. One big thing right now in our time, and you're going to hear more of it as time goes on, it's going to get worse on the Eastern Shore, is unity, unity, unity. Let's bind together, let's group together and all that. Let's have these tent meetings and all this sort of stuff uh, and all. And where we're sometimes you hear half the gospel and the other one is half carnival. I want to hear the whole gospel myself, my friend. Uh, I want to hear a straightforward sermon uh, with the Word of God. You know, don't don't throw these other trappings into it. Basically, I want to hear God's Word and not something that you think is true or that you're going to make up to make a point that's that never occurred and so on. No way, I don't want to hear this stuff. But you're going to hear more of that on the Eastern Shore and really throughout the United States. Let us bind together. Let's unify and all that. And I have seen this. Over and over again, if a strong group of Christians unify with a weak group of Christians, the weak ones don't get stronger, 
the strong ones get weaker all the time. All the time. You cannot transmit holiness to somebody else. You can't do that. It works the other way, my friend. Well, it is so indicated in Haggai chapter 2. You cannot make people holy. Uh, but on the other hand, sin is easily received from others and all. And no, each person has got to stand before God and seek his face and receive their blessing of holiness from him, their blessing of the life and character of Christ from him directly. So just don't think for a moment that just because, okay, uh, group A and B is coming together, group A is a strong, strong set of Christians, uh, and group B maybe not so strong, but they'll work things out. Yeah, yeah. A will become just as weak as B. Happens every time. Every time. Unless the Holy Spirit moves upon both A and B. And there's revival. Now, yes, God can override these things. There's going to be a move of unity whereby the Roman Catholic Church or the Catholic Church is involved, basically. Uh, by the way, the term Catholic means universal. So technically, I can say I'm Catholic with a small c. Uh, and by the way, that's how some people got into some <laughs> areas before that only Roman Catholics were allowed in. Oh, I'm Catholic too. <laughs> I belong to you. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's another story from another time. But the Roman Catholic Church or the Catholic Church is going to make this big push for unity after a time and all that. And the Pentecostals, for the most part, will follow right in there all together. Far too many Pentecostals believe in cheap grace. They believe in, you know, they have, is lackadaisical the right word? I heard that before when I was younger. I don't know if that's the right word or not. A flippant attitude, a flippant spirit about themselves. Okay, oh, there are brothers and sisters in Christ. No, they're not. When someone practices works by righteousness, uh, they are not our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let me go back on camera uh, at all. Uh, but they are not our brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh there, there, there are brothers and sisters of Christ when they pray before a statue, when they look just like Hindus on Ash Wednesday, got, they got a little dot on their head. Of, I, I used to do this, okay? I used to be Roman Catholic. They had a little dot on their head on Ash Wednesday and all. They actually think that when they're in their mass, by the way, ma what's a mass? Uh, a mass is a, what should I say, a gathering whereby the priests re-sacrifices Christ all over again. This is their actual theology. Now, some Roman Catholics will tell you no, but that's because they don't know their theology. Well, I know it, okay? If you go to the Vatican website and research this, they actually think that they are sacrificing Christ all over again. I'm looking for a wafer. <laughs> They're over there. All right. But uh, what happens is they raise up the host, and when that happens, it used to happen this way, when I was Roman Catholic, everyone knelt down. Lord, I'm not worthy. You should enter my roof. Speak but thy word, and thy servant shall be healed. You did that three times. I used to do it in Latin when I was a kid. And after, after a while, they switched it over to English. That's great in a, in a way. But yet still, it's, you know. But you would do that. So why are they saying that? Lord, I'm not worthy. You should come into my roof. Speak but thy word, and thy servant shall be healed. They believed in that. The priest had prayed over that, and when he lifts it up, this is the actual body and blood of Christ. No, it's not. It is not the actual body and blood of Christ. And then the priest brings it down, and he breaks it in half. And now, in his mind, in their theology, Christ has been re-sacrificed. My friend, Jesus said, it's finished. One time, that's it. That's all. Hebrews, book of Hebrews, important on this, okay? Well, he died once and for all, and those that come to them, to him, those that receive him as their Savior, he saves them to the uttermost. Now, of course, they've got to stay in them, all right? You know, people look at the one set of scriptures. Oh, he, they're saved. We're saved to the uttermost. Yeah, if you are in Christ, but you got to stay in him. I've got to pull this closer. <laughs> I might not. Not the whole thing over, okay? But you got to stay in him. Amen. And remain in him. So, 
let me go on here, okay? So delusions, but there, there's got to be delusions about unity and all that sort of stuff. Just, I just, no, no way. All right, getting back over here, number three, uh, we have here, uh, uh, be alert, be alert. And I think I read that part there. Yeah, I'm going to, why do I have that there? Okay. <clears throat> She's going to reread it again in a moment, but I'm just going to read the first part for you. All right, and let's go back on the screen for you. Just give me one minute. <clears throat> All right, first part of verse 8. You see that's in the yellow there? I'm sorry. Green. Okay, light green. But let us who are of the day be sober. Be sober. Green, because get away. Get, get away. Yeah, go on away. Be sober. Now, this word for sober, and I'm going to bring it up on the screen for you this time. Oh, I guess I don't have that. Okay. That's fine. Oh, I want that so bad. It's such a pretty picture. Okay. The word for sober means, the Greek word means to be sober, to be calm and collected in spirit. To be calm and collected in spirit. To be temperate, dispassionate. That's me. Okay. All right. You'd be temperate, dispassionate, circumspect. And now, W.E. Vine adds this. To be free from the influence of what? Intoxicants. Okay? We talked about that already. So, be sober. So, in other words, if... Let's talk about depression. If... Things make you depressed, you know, if, 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 not make you, but if things encourage you to be depressed, okay, you see something sad, or maybe these shootings that occur, that would make anyone sad. There's a difference between sadness and depression. Depression, you can hardly do anything after a while, but uh, sadness, okay, but if, if you see that, then just don't look at it. When the Twin Towers fell, Okay, I had to stop looking at that for a while. I mean, I looked at it. I didn't want, I didn't want to see it because I, it was affecting me. Uh, and I thought, no, I'm, I don't want to be intoxicated with sadness. And so it, it's not just, you know, these big sins that we talk about, you know, pornography or whatever. Uh, what's another one? Vengeance and all that. It's these other things, too. So be free from intoxicants. And uh, so we do want to be sober spiritually. And I'm going to superimpose on here another verse for you. And this is over in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. But the end of all times, or of all things, is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Pray for me. <laughs> no comment. All right. So, uh. All right, so it says over First Peter chapter 4, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, what does it say? Be serious, okay? Now, that doesn't mean you can't have a good joke around you in a Christian sense. And all. I think Jesus had a sense of humor, too. Uh, I could talk about that sometime, yeah. But we don't have time right now. But I do believe he did some things at, at all that if we were there, we'd start laughing if we saw the whole story. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, we are to be serious and watchful in our prayers, okay? Uh, once again, serious. So many people are so flippant anymore. Let me go back on the camera, I guess. But so many people are flippant anymore. And what happens is, for example, now, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Uh, you know, when, when some, when we get saved, a lot of times people... You know, they're growing in the Lord. And so people will say, Daddy, oh God, you know, you know, Pops God. <laughs> All right, after a while, you learn, though, we're supposed to show a level of reverence, okay? And there's one term in God's word, it's Father, okay? Oh, now, yes, it's Papa God, uh, that's okay. And when the Scotch or Welch did that, they both did that. I think it was during the Welsh Revival, not too sure. It, they did it out of reverence. Okay, well, I'm doing uh, Pops God. Out. <laughs> yeah. uh, I may just listen to God after a while. He'll, he'll, he'll just refine that, I do believe, okay? But for when I see Christians on there, ministers and teachers that get, get too 
relaxed after a while, okay? And there's different aspects to that. And I think that sometimes it's like a, a middle line to go. Now, I have been criticized myself for not wearing a tie. I don't wear a tie because I sweat. I'm terrible, right? I mean, when I'm speaking or playing an instrument like the piano or keyboard, I sweat. Okay. And, you know, because right now I'm concentrating by God's grace on what I'm trying to do here. So, uh, you know, and it just, everything's focused upon that. So, um, yeah, someone once said, when someone really preaches a message, you, that's actual work. And it is actual work. If I, I walk around, I feel better. I don't care. But the camera won't follow me. But you must make the camera follow you. <laughs> Can you see that? All over the place. Okay, we're not going to turn the camera too far. All right. But all over the place. Okay. But uh, the thing, how did I get on that? What I was talking about? Oh, uh, being serious. No. Right. Is that it? Okay. But the thing is, uh, but then there's some preachers on the opposite end. They'll go ahead and speak in shorts or something like that. Uh, at least the dress. Uh, rip, ripped clothing. All right. I, well, maybe if you're reaching out to some people, I know, that might be okay. But as a whole body of Christ, I don't think that's appropriate myself. Now, somebody says, well, you should be wearing a tie. I sweat. All right. Real bad. Real bad. It doesn't matter. I sweat. I get too hot. I, I have more trouble speaking than ever. And I don't want that to happen. So what I say is more important than the way I look at this point, okay, as far as the tie is concerned. But remember, I used to wear a tie quite often, right? <laughs> right. You laugh, and I don't hardly wear a tie, okay? Uh, but, uh, but the thing is, but people are getting too flippant with God, and, you know, just teaching and preaching, just, you know, and it doesn't matter to some people what translation they use. It's all the Word of God. No, it's not. The Word of God, okay? No, it's not the Word of God all the way. We have translations of God's Word. Okay, this is what we have. The King James, which is next to me here. Uh, she reading from the New King James. We had on the screen American King James Version and all that. Uh, we have all these things going on, but they're translations of the actual Word of God. And you really got to look at each word. We all don't have time for that, but the main thing is, is that what we need for salvation and spiritual growth, it's it's there, basically, okay? But you can grow more and know more. The more you know, the more you can grow uh, and be stronger in the Lord. And things will light up if you go deeper into the languages, just like this thing about the silver, all right? Uh, be tempered, dis dispassionate, you know? All right, so uh, I, I don't know what side of the political thing you're on. Okay, but if your president, if your choice of president doesn't make it, don't go off the deep end, okay? If you're a Christian, do not go off the deep end. If you're a Christian, you're, you're to believe that God is in charge, okay? We did not like it when Obama was president for eight years, right? Did you like it? I thought it was okay. But we didn't go off the deep end, all right? No, and uh, didn't act that way. Did we complain from time to time? Yes. Did I compliment Obama a couple? Yes, I did a couple times. I also like a couple of things that Biden has done. Not too many. But in some cases, he has done the right thing. I forget what they are right now. But, you know, the thing is, this passion about this stuff going around us, okay? We need to be passionate about the gospel of Christ and to proclaim that at all times. Let's get to number four because my time is running short. And so now we want to go to active active let's get back on the screen here let me try my these glasses out if i do that i'm fine okay if i just do that properly i'm great and uh no nope, we want this okay and let me bring that up okay we here we go all right now let's read the entirety of verse eight now and we're gonna emphasize the last part of verse eight though uh, first Thessalonians. yeah first Thessalonians and five yeah but let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Now, here's the other part of verse 8. Putting on, you got to do something. You just don't sit there and say, I believe, I believe. Put on 
it says, putting on, and that's active, by the way, putting on every day, all the time, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. They go hand in hand, okay? And by the way, you know, sometimes I think this this word faith that we see in God's word, there's only one word that's translated as faith and faithfulness. Sometimes I think it needs to be translated as faithfulness. Faithfulness. Not just faith, because then if you have faith in people that are just think, I believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus. Faithfulness. All right, I'm going to read this way. Faithfulness. I could do that. That's how it is in the Greek, my friend. Okay, so I'm not changing anything here. It's pistis. That's the word in the Greek. And so the breastplate of faithfulness and love, putting on this continual, putting on this, uh, the word here, by the way, is the same word that you shall be endued with power from on high. I think it's the same word. But putting on, just sinking into clothing. So you just put it on. If It fits your image because you're made in the image of God. All right? So you put on the faithfulness of Christ. All right? And it's the breastplate. By the way, if you don't know what that is, that uh, that covers the part of the body from the neck to the navel, uh, where the ribs are and so on, and just below the ribs and so on. But if you notice that we have a natural thorax, by the way, this is the word in, in Greek is thorax, by the way, for breastplate. And so our natural thorax, what does it cover? It covers our lungs and our heart and all that important stuff, and our spleen, I think, our liver to a degree, and all that, all that important stuff. <laughs> so it protects that. Uh, so now, now breastplate of love. Oh, by the way, it says two parts here also about this breastplate uh, in the definition of thorax. Uh, of course, they're consisting of two parts protecting the body on both sides from the neck to the middle. Well, we have the breastplate here of love and faithfulness in our text. And then the helmet is the hope of salvation. Hope. Notice what it says there, hope. It just doesn't say salvation, it says hope, right? So, in essence, let me put it this way. We, if you're saved, you have salvation. But you hope for full salvation. There's no Christian right now, dead or alive, that's fully saved until the resurrection. All right? So, you can, let's name a, one that we can figure is a goodie. Can I, can I think of any right now? Ah, uh, and I hope they made it. If I can think of a real good one. Oh, uh, Watchman E, Chinese guy, uh, China, who the Chinese people, uh, Chinese government killed uh, at all, but a great Christian law. So uh, it, 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 even him, he's not completely saved yet until the resurrection. When he gets resurrected, he has a new body, okay? So that's our hope of salvation. So the thing is, we got to hang into Christ. Even just using that, why didn't he just say salvation? Why didn't he say the helmet of salvation? No, the helmet, that's the hope of salvation. Hope of salvation, okay? So yes, we're saved, but we're not fully saved yet. And that's not going to occur until the resurrection of the righteous. And so we want to remain righteous. So now, while we've got that on the screen for you, let's go down to number five now. A warder. All right, so far we had so far, get away, get away, get alert, get active, and now get awarded. And that is verses 9 to 10 of our text. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. All right, now, he's not a point of wrath. I talked about that at the beginning of this message. And what should I say? Uh, Pre-tribulations would say, see, we're not appointed to the wrath of God, which is true. We'll be taken out of here. However, there, you know, there is that possibility that the church, uh, when I first got saved, they believed in mid-trip. And then as they got into the sons of God, they, they insisted pre-trip. So I asked a few questions, and I found out all this stuff about pre-trip is cool. But also, if you look at all these sides of the, of the equation, my friend, it could very well be post-trip. I, I asked a pastor one time, a good friend of mine, we, didn't, we never argued about anything. He was Presbyterian. He is Presbyterian. I'm Pentecostal. He uh, believes, you could say, I guess, the perseverance of the saints and all, and, and also predestination. I don't. <laughs> not, not like he does. All right, 
but we never argued about a single thing. We had good discussion. I wish he was still here. Come on back, Pastor Dorman. <laughs> no, he's happy up where he's at right now. And so, but we never argued about this stuff at all. But one day I asked him, Brother Dorman, I said, what, what would be, why would the church be here, go through the great tribulation period? Why? What's the, you know, what, what's the purpose of it? And he just said these words, simple words, for the glory of God. Oh, well, that, so, well, that works for me. <laughs> All right, I can, I can understand that. I can. So uh, the fact is, be ready, okay? And that's the thing. You, you, he, I got one brother in Christ. He, he's writing a book about pre. No, I forget what it said. Po, I forget how it was post. Whatever, post or pre, whatever. I don't know. He's going to write about. It. He's going to write about the. Listen, it's not worth it. Just tell the people to be ready for anything. They can die in a minute. A Christian can die in a minute at all. Or someone that thinks they're a Christian can die in a minute. No, we got to make sure we're in Christ no matter where we're at in the timeline. So you know, lay that to heart, my friend. But he's not pointing to wrath. Of course, the wrath of God. Like we said before, if the church goes through the great tribulation period, or at least half, let's, or let's Let's say halfway through the seven-year period, which some people have looked at it this way, the first half isn't too bad. The last half is the great trip, okay? But uh, that might be true, too, because I, you know, that, that sounds right also, essentially. But no matter what, as long as we're still here, we are going to face the wrath of man. Somewhere along the line, we will face the wrath of man. Let me get back to camera, all right? So uh, although let me, I do have to read the rest of this here. Verse 10, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. So be awarded. Now, uh, we don't want wrath. But if we're not saved, this is what we're going to get. If we permit ourselves to be spiritually sleepy, this is what we're going to get. We're going to get wrath. Where God says the wrath of God abides upon the son's disobedience. So you can say you're saved all you want. And, and you have prayed the sinner's prayer and think that once you're saved, that's it, or I'm good. Oh, God forgives. He'll forgive me. If I go ahead and, uh, what can I do wrong? <laughs> uh, steal my neighbor's apple. I don't know. Uh, if I steal something from my neighbor, oh, God will forgive me. Yeah. And all. No, no, that's, that's the wrong attitude. He might not forgive you. Yeah. He might not forgive you. Bear that in mind. We're not saved by works, but we are saved by the life of Christ with us. And Christ wouldn't commit sin. And then my father will forgive me. I'm his son. Christ never said that. He never thought that. Okay? So he never he never thought that. He never acted that way. But what our, what we want is Christ himself. It says, uh, verse 10, who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. But, well, we do where we wake or sleep. That tells right there when a person, when a Christian dies, people talk about soul sleep. Right? But we're with Christ, I, I would believe that we, the person, when it says we're with Christ, you know, we're with Him, uh, even though you're, you're, looks like you're asleep in your, you know, in your body, your day, your place, the casket, and all that, you're with Christ, and you're there praising and worshiping Him and magnifying His name. Our, both are our, our parents, okay. Both sets of parents, we believe, are with the Lord, praising God and worshiping God. Okay, <laughs> Amen. Oh, let me get on <laughs> and all that. But you're with Christ Himself, and then when time comes, your your spirit's placed back into your resurrected body. I could say more about that. In fact, it's going to, we're going to touch upon that in the last scripture that you read, because she's going to read pretty soon uh, from First John chapter three, one to three. Uh, that when we shall see him, we shall be like him. And I really believe, like, when we're raised from the dead, let's say you're, let's say you suffer with pain in your body, whatever, or you, you can't, for well, me, I can't see too well, I got pain too, but I uh, can't see too well, I can do this, you know, I can't see, I can see the lettering, but it's all blurry. But I believe at the resurrection of the dead, and all. Raised in his life, and all of a sudden, my eyes can clear. All of a sudden, no more gray hair, and I got more. Oh, it's messed up. Uh, it's, uh, it's more. 
I got, it, it's, there's more hair up there and all that. I had more hair when I was younger, like most people do, and all that. that stuff's going to happen to us. And we, we, we happen in an instant, but we'll feel it. And we, why? Because we'll behold him. We'll see him as he is, and we'll be just like him. Amen. A lie for everyone. Let's get to that scripture right now. <laughs> Look at that. I'm zooming in with my eyes since I'm nearsighted. And do I have it up? Yes, I do. Okay. And here we go. First John chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, and everyone who has this, this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Did you read that last verse? Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself. So we just don't sit back and say, I'm saved, I'm good, I'm fine. God will forgive me. No, we purify ourselves. We want to be better all the time. I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago, even probably 10 months ago. I don't know. But I'm not the same person. I, we increase in Christ all the time. This is the way we got to be. Uh, real quick, I used to be real nervous, right? No, I'm not that nervous anymore. Unless, unless my wife sneaks up on me and scares me to death. But uh, that's, a, that's a different story. All these, boom! Yeah. All right. But that's a different story. Everything's quiet in the house, and there she is. Boom! You know, surprising me. But no, I used to be worried about this, that, and the other thing. Will we get that church? Don't they like me? What we get? Uh, stuff like that. No more. Why? Because you progress in Christ. Don't stay in the same spot, my friend. Keep growing Christ. I've, I've got to proclaim that there's victory in Jesus. And you don't have to stay the way you are. Don't walk around saying, I'm just a sinner. God understands. He loves me anyhow. And don't just say, no, no. If you really love the Lord, look at verse 3 again. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. So, Christian friend, get serious with God, mean business with God through Jesus Christ, and just follow through and listen to his voice at all times and obey the Lord. Yeah. But nudge your heart by the Holy Spirit and to change certain things in your life. Just make an effort. Like I said before, when I was fighting depression, God put away these these pictures and things that make me sad. Everything in this house makes me happy. It's, it's a nice thing to look at, right? right. So everything in here. And so uh, that's how I have it. And that's the way it's going to be uh, at all. And that's what, that's what we got to do. I see something on the internet that bothers me. Just go past right over it. Don't look at it again all that. If something affects my mind, read the email, stuff like that, some dirty stuff sometimes. You, sometimes I got to bathe my brain in the Word of God again, okay? Or go research something in God's Word. Uh, that that's really helps out. So, friend, if you're saved, you want to remain in Christ. You want to keep purging yourself. And if you're not saved, remember, you can leave this world at any time. You don't want to leave it without having Christ in your heart. Friend, be encouraged to come to Him. And by the way, also the great tribulation is coming. If you think stuff is bad now, and if God permits you to live during that time, you won't like it at all, okay? If you didn't like the masks, okay, it's going to be worse during the Great Tribulation period. So, friend, I encourage you to come to him now. Make your peace with God. To do so, please pray this prayer, but mean it not just now, but every second of your life. Father, forgive me. I am a sinner. I ask Christ to come in. I surrender all that I am him. I give him all, Father. Help me, Lord, to lift you up, pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. If you have prayed that prayer and have meant it, we have two things for you on the internet. First of all, it records how seven weeks for growth of Christ. You'll find that in the same location. Uh, well, you'll find that at archive.org. And also, I'm trying to see why. Here it is. I got up too far. Uh, you'll find it at archive.org and uh, also at my Sapphire Streams pages. And you'll find that recording. Look for seven weeks for growth of Christ. If you do a search engine, put my last name next to that and all, and hopefully it will take you to archive.org or maybe my pages here and all that, and uh, Sapphire Streams. But Sapphire Streams will, will send you back to archive.org on the link. 
Also, we have for you a series of lessons titled Basic Elms of Christianity, and that's at sapphirestreams.com forward slash BEC forward slash all lowercase letters. You may take that now in any language. We have 11 lessons, uh, any language that Google Translate supports, so that's good. So go there and take those lessons free. You don't have to log in, so that's why we don't have a security certificate. Don't worry about it. If your browser says it's not secure, it's secure, my friend. Don't worry about it. Okay. So uh, take those lessons. All right. And now we're going to do a prayer request now at this time. And the first one happens to be from Nepal. After putting her trust in Jesus, Sami received a New Testament. Her younger brother noticed it and told her Hindu father, who, should, who shouted at Sami, and threatened her with a knife. He told her to leave her Christian faith or to leave his house. Mm. When Somi did leave, her father burned her clothes, Bible, and other Christian literature that he found. Somi's pastor let her stay at the church for 15 days before she returned home. Eventually, her father and other villagers emotionally abused her for leaving Hinduism. The persecution kept Somi from completing high school, so she struggles to find quality work. Today, 21-year-old Sumi works odd jobs and attends church in a nearby city. Pray that Sumi is able to form strong relationships with other believers and that she is able to make peace with her father and other family members. Jesus, I thank you for this, uh, this girl that uh, accepted you as her Savior. I pray that you might just uh, strengthen her and encourage her. I pray also that you might provide for her job she might be able to uh, do what she needs to do there. But I pray that you might uh, open the hearts of her family also, that they might accept you. I pray that you might just help her to continue being a witness and to never to give in to uh, them wanting to give up her faith, but help her to continue on with you. Because your what scripture says that if we continue to the end, if we're faithful to the end, those are the ones that will be saved. Lord, I thank you that you did save her already, but I, I pray again that you might save the rest of her family also because of her life. And this we ask in your name and for your sake. Amen. All right, I'm going to try to pronounce the name of this country. It used to be Ivory Coast. I looked up the pronunciation the other day, but I'm not good at French. I'm better at Spanish. Uh, but Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, so, Sonogo, your, was raised a Muslim and married a man who worships the traditional idols of their village. Together, the couple has seven children. One of their daughters asked to go to a Christian church, and her father allowed it. The daughter eventually trusted in Christ and invited her mother to attend church. After Sonogo attended the Christian church, her husband was enraged and abandoned Sonogo and their children. Uh, since then, Sonogo has worked odd jobs to provide for her family, but finding work is difficult, and most of her children have moved away to look for work. Despite Sonogo's struggles, her number one prayer request is that her husband would come to know Jesus, a frontline worker of Sherrod. Uh, pray for Sonogo and her children to have hope in Christ, and that their faithful witness will draw her husband to faith in Christ. And Father, we do pray for Sonogo and her children. Help the Lord and help them to remain firm in you no matter what, uh, despite the persecution, despite the troubles, and we ask that you soften her husband's heart, draw him to you. Help him, Lord, to come to know you as his Savior, and give Sonoda wisdom and direction from you, and help her receive that, and follow through, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So glad you're joining us. Uh, come out to Cornerstone uh, Assembly this Thursday. We won't have service tonight, but this Thursday, 7 p.m., for question and answer time at 415 Academy Street in Cambridge, Maryland, at a church called The River. We're not affiliated with The River, but we rent sanctuary to from them. So come on out for that. We'd be glad to have you. Bring your questions about God and the Bible, and we'll do our best to answer it. God's word. Amen. So you have a good day, Jesus Christ. Go with God, my friend. You who dwell in the gardens, the companions listen for your voice. Let me hear it. Maranatha! 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 Maranatha. Maranatha.